We got one going. Now we got both going. Yeah, we're going. Okay, let's get started so we can go eat dinner. Okay, what are we having for dinner? Oh, we're having Comfort Classic Pot Roast. Is Comfort Classic like part of the title? Or, no, or is... I just made it up. I'm okay. It's just like a homey comforting dish. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I wonder if people think they can't have like comforting food when they're on a diet. Uh, I know that people think they can't. Mm. Maybe not everybody, but yeah. for sure lots of people. Because I'm in calorie deficit right now. Yeah, me too. We both are. How <sighs> often does that happen? And we're still having pot roast with potatoes and carrots, you know, all the good stuff. Is there like a special recipe for this that you could share with people sometime? Or is it pretty simple, basic? I mean, there there's tons out there. And there's like hand-me-down recipes by generation like it's a thing yeah but, but is I this one share is there... a specific recipe if someone wants a specific pot roast I'm recipe. curious if this recipe is specifically different in any way than like because mm. first of all I'm sure some people are like oh it's probably some healthy version of pot roast and I know that it's not like it's, it's not there's not like some weird ingredient in it mm. that makes it healthy put alcohol in it but I'm curious <laughs> if there's anything else in it that would make a difference have this one stand out. I don't know. I'd have to look. I've never seen any different way to make paros. Maybe some people use soda sometimes okay. to do that, but I don't know. I don't know. If you were curious, let me know. We'll compare com pot roast recipes. Nice. Comfort classic pot yeah. roast. Well, I'm curious, like, what are some other comfort dishes that people think they can't have? I'm curious. Like, what's yeah. your favorite comfort dish? Let us know. We're gonna answer some Q and A's. Now we are. We're gonna we're gonna we're so gonna we, A some Q's. <laughs> so we can go eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. So the the headline that we're addressing is the question of why am I not losing weight? So we're gonna answer that. We'll probably answer that later on in the Q and A. Mm, but keep you hanging. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to listen to some of the other questions first. So let's just go through this list here. We just got a handful of them this time, and uh, we'll see how far we get. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, this one's for you. Dun, 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 dun. Do starches count as vegetables? Okay, put me on the spot. Do starches count as vegetables? Okay, so starches. L like potatoes. Potatoes, okay. Car carrots a starch? Carrot. I don't, because I don't even worry about what's a starch or not, I'm totally out of that mindset of, oh, I can't have starches. Um. So if it's a, it so, also depends on your goals too. So someone who's in a weight loss goal needs to pay a little bit more close attention to uh, the foods they're eating. So we might put potatoes in the carb category. But for the most part, if it's a vegetable and it is also considered a starch, we're calling it a vegetable because it's a way better choice than a lot of the other, you know, starchy foods or that you could choose um, that are highly processed or higher calorie carbs, like cereal and rice and grit. Well, rice is fine, but other um, Well, so things. so this one is specifically asking about vegetables. So okay. that, that I think is the, that's my assumption of what the question is about okay. is like, obviously bread's not a vegetable, but things like potatoes, like should you count that as a vegetable or should you not? Yeah. Like well, if you're trying to eat more veggies, yeah. Again, it, it depends on your goal. If you're just trying to eat more veggies, yeah, let's count it. Because <laughs> yeah. it is a vegetable, and those are all great foods to eat. Eating vegetables is super important and one of the best things you can do. So eat the starches. Yeah. For sure. So, But if you're trying to lose weight, you said... If you're trying to lose weight, then it needs to be a little bit more nuanced and, and strategized. But you can mix... Um, more often we would count them as a carb, right? Yeah, it would be more important to get a mix of leafy greens and also other vegetables and find a range. But it's not not a vegetable. No. It's not like, oh, you shouldn't eat potatoes because it's a starch, yeah. not a vegetable. Right. It still has lots Please of Please eat. <laughs> Please eat potatoes. Okay. <laughs> We're having potatoes today. Good. And carrots. Okay. Okay. Question two. This one's for me, I guess. Oh, let me answer it. Oh. You want to answer it or ask it? I want to, I'll ask it because my answer will confuse people. <laughs> how <laughs> okay. much cardio should I do? Okay, how much cardio should you do? That's, um, well, I'm going to give an answer kind of like what you did, I guess, because I would answer this in two different ways, whether we're talking about just for your in general health 
or for weight loss? I'm gonna answer for weight loss first because that one's easier to answer. How much cardio should you do for weight loss? The answer is um, there isn't any amount of cardio that you should do for weight loss because you don't need to do any cardio for weight loss. I do not prioritize cardio with our clients whose main goal is weight loss. Um, in fact, I don't prioritize cardio for people, even if their main goal isn't weight loss, even if it's just a part of their goal. Uh, more often what I will do is I will create workouts for them that are strength-based, that have a cardio component to it. And I don't mean that, that they're running as well as lifting weights. I mean they're doing two exercises back-to-back, -back, and so it keeps their heart rate up, that, that sort of thing. Um, but ultimately, for weight loss, don't do cardio. And I don't literally mean don't do cardio like it's bad. I just mean like that's not what you should be going to for weight loss. Yeah. Cardio is absolutely great for your health. So if you're losing weight and you also are like, no, I, I also care about my health and I've got the time to do it and I want to commit to it, then doing some cardio will help with that. Now, again, like I said, you can get a great cardio benefit from a strength-based workout. So that can certainly be part of it. It could be all of it potentially. However, if you really want to focus on, I want to improve my heart health, uh, I want to lower my blood pressure, that type of thing, then the type, then how much cardio you do, you do it, it'll come down to the specific goal. But if it's just literally just general health, I would say try to do, first of all, try to just be active every day. Going for walks is going to help more than what you even think with, mm -hmm. with your heart health. But if you can, uh, if you can put in a good two or three days of really easy cardio where your heart rate is slightly more than what you would do for a walk, so not even going for a jog, something in between a walk and a jog, like a brisk walk or walking up a hill. If you're doing it on a treadmill, just on a slight incline. I'm talking raising your heart rate a little bit, but where it's still easy enough that you could do it for what feels like almost forever. Like you could pretty much just keep going for, and it's not gonna to be too difficult for hours on end. That's the type of cardio that you're gonna get the most benefit from that you won't get from your strength-based workouts. And if you can do that two or three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes, that's going to get you a really, really long way. You really maximize the time spent yes. in your weight loss and health efforts. Health more than weight health loss. Health more than weight loss, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the cool thing is, if you want to, if you really are like, okay, I want to improve my heart health, I want to get my blood pressure down, you can focus on that more for a while. So just do one strength workout a week, that's fine, and then focus on those other couple days out of the week of really doing a little bit more cardio, still keep it that lower intensity, that's going to still have a, a bigger effect. And then once you kind of get where you want to be, Strength exercise actually can help you maintain that cardio health. So you don't necessarily have to do more because the amount of cardio that you'll be doing with the strength exercise can help you maintain a really healthy level. So sometimes it's a matter of doing a little bit more and then switching back and forth. But, but ultimately, it's not as much as what most people think. It certainly is not every day you should be going and doing a bunch of really high intensity, raise your heart rate every day. That's not going to get you the best benefit. No. So That's if you have any questions on that, I feel like I answered it in several different ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to clarify more, but hopefully that helps some. That's good. Better than I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> uh, I won't ask you what that answer would have been. Yeah, I know you don't like cardio, so. Well, I don't want to take up too much time, but I was going to ask, uh, should I do cardio if it affects my mental health? <laughs> Yeah, I want to, um, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> it will affect your mental health. It'll help you feel, it'll have a positive effect yeah. on your mental health. Okay. But That's I know you're just messing I am. Okay. So how, oh, this one's a tough one. How do I get over feeling guilty when I binge? Ooh. I'm really curious to see how you answer this. That is, we need more time for this one. Um, <laughs> because it is complex and everybody has different um, reasons or situations for binging, different phases of their life. Um, 
I think. Yeah, I, I do want to clarify that this is not like answer. If you have a binge eating disorder, we're not answering that question because that's yeah. a different level of you need something beyond a nutrition coach. This for. is more like, oh, I ate an uh, entire sleeve of Oreos and I didn't mean to. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. If it's, you know, and even that's nuanced, you know, if that's something you're worried about and you see yourself doing frequently, that's definitely worth a conversation with a medical professional. But if you find yourself often feeling guilty over having food you didn't plan on having or just feeling un not in control around food, um, I think the first, it's, it's definitely multi-stepped and it's definitely going to vary from person to person, but the first thing you need to do is start to figure out why or what's going on and identify why you're binging and becoming more aware. Is it emotions? Is it because you're following an unrealistic diet and then when you get around a food you don't have control over, it's all downhill from there. Um, so really starting to self-assess and check in with yourself and figure out why am I doing this? And then have some compassion for yourself as you figure out how to make those changes because becoming aware is the first step. And then the next things you can do are change those thought processes, processes, those habits, and start to implement different um, thought patterns and different habits to change it. And then that is a process in itself. So, and you will find yourself binging and you'll be able to recognize those feelings in the middle of it and you can start to work on getting over it. And that's a hard thing to do on your own. Um, that's something I recommend having some accountability with, either with like a friend, a nutrition coach, or even a therapist with experience with binge eating. I would also just say that getting past the idea of certain foods being good or bad in the first place yeah. is a big part of yeah. the process. Definitely understanding more, a um, more relaxed view on what foods you should be eating a lot of and having just a more realistic approach. I'm like, treats are okay sometimes, guys. It's all right. And, and, and figuring out that balance and how to include those things in your life um, and finding the right balance of food that you should be eating regularly so you don't feel like you need to be out of control at any point. Yeah. Okay. So it's very complex. It is, but that's that's a good gives a good starting point yeah. and some good thoughts with that. Okay. okay, this one's another one for you. Although I did leave a note on this just because I have an idea that Which I wanted to don't understand. <laughs> the question is what's the best diet? Mm. Did you wanna <laughs> did Can you wanna I say answer? none? Yeah. Um there is no, in, in, in the sense that, okay, should I do keto or paleo or whatever is popular at the time you're watching this video? Um, no. <laughs> None of them. None are. of them And are probably the, shouldn't do any of them. The best diet. There is no one thing that works for everybody. Um, the one thing that does work for everybody is eating a more nutritious, balanced food and being more mindful of what you're eating and figuring out... Um, what that looks like in your life and and how you can be consistent with it yeah i i said that they shouldn't do any of those diets do you disagree with that uh yeah <laughs> uh, and i hesitate because i know i know people who whose lives have changed you know starting those things and then they've found good habits just being a kick kickstarter with those but um Ultimately, it's, a lot of times it's not something that's sustainable. So you might be better off just starting out with a more realistic approach on learning how to eat more balanced, nutritionally balanced meals and like finding reasonable portions than trying to assimilate a diet with lots of strict rules. Yeah, I kind of figured you would disagree with that fairly direct statement, but I... From my perspective, I just know how many people it doesn't work for yeah. and has a negative outcome yeah. for. So to me, it's better to just say avoid it. Mm -hmm. Even though I agree with you that some people do fine with it. It's not it's not inherently bad 100% of the time, all the time. But for me, if it's bad most of the time, which it is, I would rather just avoid it. Think, so Yeah, I think a lot of people have trouble identifying that it is bad for them too because yeah. they lose weight and then 
they they gain it back and then they do it again and they think it's working, but really it's not working if you're gaining it back and you're having to do it over and over again. So, okay. The, the note that I wrote on this, this was something that I read in a book that had nothing to do with fitness or nutrition, uh, but it made me think of this was asking what the best diet is, is like asking a, and, and that's, again, that's not what it said in this book, but it's how I'm equating it here. Asking what the best diet is, is like asking a chess player what the best chess move is. <laughs> which obviously is impossible to really answer because there's so many po possibilities. Yeah. And it just depends on the context of, okay, where are you at in the game? What's your mm. overall strategy? What, who's your opponent? I love that. So it changes. There, there is no best move. There is a best move at a particular point in a game, but there isn't just an overall one best chess move. Mm. And there isn't an overall one best diet or even one best healthy eating strategy. Um, okay, next question. How should I work out around a nagging injury? Ooh, ooh I know. Go. Wine at your trainer. <laughs> I mean, that's certainly something you're allowed to do, I guess. I know it's something that you have done. Actually, you I don't recommend it. <laughs> you haven't really had a lot of nagging injuries, have you? I guess a couple. You dealt with knee stuff. In back. In your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like for me, I've dealt with such like horrible injuries um, with exercise that it is something I've dealt with more. You've dealt with some pretty terrible injuries, such as getting hit by a truck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you weren't necessarily trying to exercise at the time. Like, I had been actually. Oh, that's true. Yeah. You did. It was a different phase of life, is what I'm saying. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a time. It wasn't a nagging injury. It was like a complete rehabilitation. Yeah. And so for this question in particular, I'm thinking of it from the, from the context of me having had back issues that literally for the majority of my life affected how I felt physically and could interrupt a workout on any given notice, um, any, any given moment yeah. that, that that's kind of how I'm viewing this is. Okay, what do you do in those instances? And actually, I'll answer from your perspective too, and I'll go through this quickly now because I'm taking too much time. But um, the main thing is to work around it. So, and that can mean lots of different things, but if you have a nagging injury that is like your, your knee, find exercises that you can do. In fact, there's a really great trainer, his name's Tony Gentlecore, and I love his, he's got a, um, I think he calls it, I can't remember what he calls it now. Exercise uh, menu. Find your trainable menu, I think is what he calls it. In other words, find the stuff that you can do. Put that in your menu of, I know that this works for me. And do those. Don't worry about doing the stuff that bothers you. Um, there is something that you can do. Yep. That, I just want to like reiterate that. Yep. And, and again, work around it. So don't work through it. If you're having a lot of pain with an exercise, don't go, oh, no pain, no gain. Figure out what you can do instead that will not cause you to be in pain. Um, and then also, if it is a bigger injury and you are literally like, well, I can't, I can't work out. Walk. I can't, yeah, I can't. Then Step on you can still, if your legs hurt, you still have your arms. Mm -hmm. If your arms hurt, you've still got your legs. If you've got, if you've got one arm hurt, you still have the other arm. There are still things that you can do. Having an injury doesn't mean that you can't exercise. So a lot of times it really comes down to having an understanding of what exercises you can do and having a big enough exercise library to pull from to go, well, okay, I know I can't do this, but I can do this. Mm -hmm. If all you know are three or four different exercises, you're going to have a really hard time working around that. So that can help having a trainer who can just pull from literally hundreds of exercises and say, well, let's try this one instead. It'll save you the time learning all that. And ultimately strengthen that area in the long run when you can and when it makes smart and when mm -hmm. The help makes sense. of a doctor and someone who yeah. knows what they're talking about or a trainer working with a doctor and say, okay, we have this knee problem. Let's build up strength around that knee. And then it can potentially not be a problem anymore. Don't just go back to doing what you did before that got you hurt in the first place. All right. Last question. There's one more. Yeah. The one that we, Oh, we why, got that one. Why am I not losing weight? 
we saved this for last one. I feel like this one could be its own question, a, a video in itself. Okay, here's what it's not, real quick. Yeah. It's not because you're not disciplined enough. Okay. It's not because you can't, I don't know how to phrase that, stay motivated. Mm -hmm. That's everybody. I mean, nobody can stay motivated. Yeah. Um, it's not because there's something wrong with you. Okay, so what is it? <laughs> okay, so there is truly only one reason why you can't lose weight. If you are doing, even if you're doing everything, you think you're doing it right, there's only one thing that it comes down to why you are not losing weight. And that is that you are not in a calorie deficit. It is impossible to not lose weight if you're in a calorie deficit. In other words, if you are eating less calories, fewer calories than you are burning throughout the day, then you have to lose weight. That is just a law of physics that you you have to lose weight. So that's the answer to the question as far as why. That doesn't really address how to solve the problem, which I do feel like is like, okay, we could spend another 20 minutes uh -huh. answering that. But I, I think I'm gonna stop there mainly because I think that's the most important thing to understand is that, like you said, is that there's not something wrong with you. It's simply that you have to find a way to get in a calorie deficit. You don't need some special diet for it. Um, you don't need some magical type of exercise that's going to burn more calories or burn more fat. You might need to be a little bit more active. You might need to not eat quite as much, or you might need to, I mean, there are so many different things, so many different strategies you can do on how, mm -hmm. the, but the point is, you, you have to somehow get into a calorie deficit. Yeah. And when we're coaching somebody, we, we have three main things that we look at balancing. And some is more and some is less. And we try to get them all balanced just right for your lifestyle so that we, we take care of the how. And yeah. that those are three pieces, main components that we break it down into. What are they? Um, strength training, okay. daily activity, uh -huh. and portions. Ah. And a balanced nutrition. Yeah, I, I like to break it down into four. What's your four? Uh, <laughs> Are we coaching people together? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the same stuff. It's okay. it's exercise, strength training in, in particular, daily activity, so not exercise, mm -hmm. but being active. And then I like to break the nutrition down into two different things. I okay. like to break it down into the portions, meaning the amount of food that you're eating, but also the quality of that food that you're eating, which is going to affect the amount of food ultimately yeah. that you eat. So. Yeah. All of those, I mean, you could just break it down into movement and, and, and eating. Like and then subcategories. Yeah. yeah. So, and then within those subcategories are multiple strategies for each thing. Yeah. And that's the point is that there are a million different ways to go with this. But as long as you know to begin with that, okay, well, I just have to figure out some kind of strategy to get into that calorie deficit. And if I feel like, oh, I'm already, I, I think I am in a calorie deficit, but I'm not losing weight. You're not, you're just not in a calorie deficit. And that's okay, that happens a lot to people. Um, so it's understandable to feel that way. Mm -hmm. But but the ultimate goal is figuring out, okay, why are you not in a calorie deficit and what can you do to get there? In a way that's gonna be actually like doable for real life because yeah. you can't just starve yourself. And you've got priorities like your job and your kids and yep. some weird hobbies. <laughs> I don't know. What kind of weird I hobbies, man? I couldn't think of a specific <laughs> hobby, so I thought of weird hobbies. So. All right. Well, let's go for now. We took up enough time. If you've got any questions, leave comments. We'll do another Q&A, or we can answer you directly. Send us a message. We're happy yeah. to help. Bye. Bye.